call. Oh, he surprised me. I didn't see you there. Welcome to another day of working in the shop. Let me tell you what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be taking the world's largest off-road wrecker frame. We're going to be adding a dump truck to it using a forklift. And then we're going to end up with at least the shape of the world's largest off-road wrecker. So we've been getting a lot of comments about the world's largest off-road wrecker, and I want to clarify something for you. I know that there's Hemets and there's LMTVs and there's all kinds of five-ton military wreckers, and I, I realize they're they're way heavier, way bigger than this. There's even like tracked vehicles, like tank recovery units. I don't know. There's probably helicopters bigger than this. However, the distinction I would like to make is those are on dirt wreckers and they are amazing. They can pull incredible load across pretty hard packed dirt. This wrecker is gonna do extreme trails. It's gonna go where the buggies go. It's gonna go where the really well-built Jeeps and Toyotas go. And it's gonna complete these trails unassisted and it's gonna be amazing. So I've made a couple of goals for this build. This build is gonna be able to handle all of our RV work in the sand, and it's gonna be able to go on the really extreme trails and be able to recover the Jeeps and Toyotas and buggies, whatever, side by side, whatever's out there breaking down on the most extreme trails. Hopefully that makes sense why I'm calling this the world's largest off-road wrecker. To give you an idea of how off-road this wrecker is gonna go, at Sand Hollow, there's a trail rating system. The official rating system goes one to 10. This particular wrecker is gonna be able to complete level eight trails. Anything over level eight is rear steer buggy territory. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do those trails with it, but we are definitely designing it to do level seven, level eight trails unassisted. So the first thing we've got to do is I want to get this at ride height, sitting on its own suspension, its own temporary suspension. But before we can do that, we've had another breakdown on the banana, broke another axle. So we've got to get that fixed first. Alrighty, good morning. So Matt told me, he's in a meeting right now, he told me to take the tire off and get ready to fix this knuckle or whatever he broke. Axel, come here, I'll show you. So that's what broke right there. That's what I'm gonna be fixing today. Look at this, look how shattered that is. <laughs> it's not supposed to be like that. You just keep changing it. On the bottom. Then... All right, so we were just gonna head out and test Lizzie's work to see if the the wheel will stay on and the four wheel drive will work, but a call came in. So we got a call for a van that is stuck out on the Babylon Mill Road. We're gonna head out there and see if we can get it out. And surprise, we got Holly back from Scotland. I have to give the weather, well, it's way better than Scotland. It's nice and warm. I don't know the temperature. Ed may fire me, but it's a beautiful day here. We got Tucker back there. We got Lizzie back there. We'll get them out and test the four wheel drive and do all the things. And then we're gonna go to lunch and then we're gonna work on the heavy wrecker. Yeah, we well, so we look for a nice yeah. trail to hike. And uh, you know, I'd say the four wheel drive could be not necessary, but could be helpful. Uh -huh. My husband knows he's a good driver in Germany. We live in Germany. Is it just front wheel drive? It is. Yeah. Yep. But you know, yep. the, but you know, we went down. We said, yeah, it's actually cool. Yeah. And then we went up, and then we had a problem, like a few hundred feet down there. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna pull a hundred cars through here this summer. That's what I figured. Yep. Hi. Hi, how are you? This sand is called blow sand. We call it blow sand because the wind moves it around all the time. It's just sand, but it's really fine. And this particular road, depending on the time of year, sometimes there's no sand on it, and sometimes there's a lot of sand on it. it just depends on how the wind's blowing. So it's that time of year again where we're gonna be back at the usual spots that you see us all summer long. This is one of them on the Babylon Mill Road. So this is the first one of 2022. Why? I've never 
never been out this way. It's beautiful back here. It is really pretty. There's some trails back there that go around. There's nothing like really technical and difficult. No, but, but it is really pretty. Awesome. I don't know what to do now. I'm gonna take over, Mister. Good job, Lizzie. All right, we'll give you an L and an S. Okay, thank you. So we've got a reoccurring problem here. The front axle on the banana is not handling the new power and the bigger tires. It's just, this has happened um, about every week since we got it together, I've broken axle on it. We've got to get the axles upgraded before we can do the shootout between the Morvair and the banana. So just be patient with us. I'm starting building axles for it right now. All right, so we got back from the job. We got some lunch. Holly was kind enough to go and get sandwiches for us. So we've got these that we're building. Everything about this wrecker is heavy duty. So let me show you what's going on here. So that's where this goes. There's gonna be a big coil spring that goes right here in this pocket. And then the shock is gonna come in here. Holly's gonna help. She needs the lift tomorrow. She can't have the lift unless this is rolling. And this can't be rolling unless we get this done. So this is all the pieces. We got the top piece. These are the brackets for the shock. This is one of the end pieces. And then these two identical pieces. When we're done, we're gonna have this for the other side. That's the bottom of the spring pocket right there. It's gonna be something like that. There's no weight on it, so it's gonna be really tall. 14 and 11 sixteenths, 14 and 3 eighths. I think part of the problem is there's an arch to this right here. All that heat for those welds. So I got my matching pair of gloves on here. It's quite the gap. Where's the gap? The gap is because this has bent that in. Because that's where it's supposed to go, is right there. You got it in your shoe? Run for my shoe! Look at that. Boo, and through the sock. Boom! It's a cool, it's a cool thing to have though. Oh yeah. Like what happened Birds there? I don't know how it's welded. All right, so this is warped and it doesn't fit anymore. And rather than straighten it out so it fits, we're gonna cut it so it fits. And you're just gonna have to be okay with it because I'm okay with it. And you'll be much happier if you don't fight me on this. Okay, so we need to come about this much of an inch. Not quite there yet. Oh, maybe we might be. Right there. Let's get that uh, angle finder. Oh, we're there. The level of precision we're looking for has been met. There's hope for you. I hope this looks good when it's done. All right, we are ready to put the bottom bucket on now. This is where you just have to look at it. I mean, just get a look at that. Ed Bassmaster taught me is that sometimes you just gotta look at it. And then when you're happy with it, make sure you mess with it until it's not there anymore. All right, it's official. We are gonna see what this looks like sitting on its own springs for the first time ever. Now I haven't finished the top spring pockets, so it's just kind of a flat spot up there. Okay, well now we got the Carolina squat going on. Just a little bit. How are you feeling about it? Good. That was our goal. Mr. Baker tomorrow, right here? Right here. Okay, you heard it first here, folks. We're gonna be right back here tomorrow doing the same thing, but it'll be a different day. All right, it's a new day. Yesterday, Holly was here and she was able to help me get these spring towers tacked up and put on the frame. Today, we're gonna be pushing the wrecker out of the shop and we're gonna be kind of fitting and seeing where the cab is gonna fit on the body, how much room we have forward and back. I don't know, we're gonna see. We're gonna kind of, and then we're gonna look at it. 
You know what I mean? Holly's actually coming by later today. She's gonna be working in the shop on Mischief Maker doing some adjustments because it's going squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. Lizzie's only here for a few more minutes. You've got a friend, some deal with her friend. She's gonna go hang out. I gotta head out of town, so. Where is Trevor? Where is Trevor? Where did he go? So Trevor is in Orlando, Florida on a vacation with his family. We sent him there because of all the wiring that he did. He was tired. But he'll be back next week, but I sure wish he was here today. Yeah, so you can fix the AC and the banana. Oh yeah, you gotta get the AC going in the banana. What was that? I don't know. We've got this frame setting about ride height. It's within an inch or a half an inch of ride height. These are not the correct springs or spacers, and we literally would never take this on the freeway with these rear springs installed the way they are. I know that, but this will give us an idea for its ride height so that when we look at the cab, we'll see stuff and then we'll think about it. With all that being said, next step, roll her on out of here. I love these screws, they always come out really nice. Sounds good. How are you doing? Fantastic. Are you feeling a bit better? Barely. What Holly's talking about is I had a man cold. Oh, all you men know what I'm talking about. Just knock me flat out. But I'm back, baby. Wow, Holly. Where's your rear stair? Boy, why don't you just do this on the trail? We have. Right there. So what are we doing today on this? We're gonna try. All right, so some of you noticed that uh, when we go out trail riding with Holly, her Jeep's like squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. Yeah, a lot, all the time. So Holly's here to kind of address that situation today. We don't need the lift for what we're doing today because I'm pulling the cab off from the donor truck. So let's get to that and we're gonna leave Holly here to get to this. We have carefully disconnected all the wires, hoses, linkages, all that stuff. There's three places where the cab bolts to the frame. We've got those unbolted. It's actually loose. So I think we can start rigging up to Now is this piece. I don't know if it can come off without taking the fenders off.
Today was a big day. It's what time is it? It's like late. I don't even know. It it's past late. quitting time. But listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, people. The squeaks and the creaks gone. So I am super excited to kind of get my concept. I've got a working model of the concept that I've had in my mind for quite a while and I'm super excited. I think this looks really incredible. Hopefully you can see the same thing that I've been seeing in this. Something that was just pointed out to me today, I've never taken the time to notice, this used to be a Clark County Fire Department truck. So I'm I'm imagining it was some kind of a brush truck or something like that. But it's kind of cool. In its past life, it was a rescue, like an emergency rescue vehicle. So it's reincarnated as yet an another. Em emergency rescue vehicle. So I'm super stoked about that. So if any of you have any information on the Clark County Fire Department in the mid 1950s, I would love to find out more information on this truck and more about its history. Drop us a note in the comments or reach out to us. It would be awesome. So as you can see, we've just kind of got it set here. It's not the right height. I think it's about the right farther forward, but you can see that these panels are just setting there because that's what we did. We just set them there. So hopefully this will give you a vision of what I see and you'll be excited too. So we're out here to Sand Hollow with my friend Abby and her family. I met Abby last week at the Easter car show. Abby and her family told me how important the All Abilities Park was to them and they have to travel all the way to St. George to get to it. So they're super excited about having a new park here in Hurricane. So I've decided to extend this donation for two more weeks so that you can have an opportunity to buy a patch or you can donate directly to the cause so that we can get an all abilities park right here in Hurricane so that people like Abby and her family can have a place closer to where they live where they can go outside and enjoy this incredible Southern Utah weather. And now we're gonna go for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> it is gonna be a little bit crazy. Not too crazy though, but a little bit. <laughs> it's a pretty big jump here. I'll give you a little boost. Have you been excited for this? Yes. Okay, where should we go? Do you wanna go down by the water a little bit? Yeah. Now it's kind of a little bit loud in here, but we'll take it, we'll try to take it nice and easy. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Oh, Lizzie's gonna get us back. <laughs> you okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. So much fun. I think Gabby needs to drive. What you got there, Lizzie? A baby. You just sit there. You don't need to push the gas okay. in super slow mode. Okay. And I can help you. I can help you steer it over here. Okay. All right. Where are we going? This way. Look at that. Here we go. Where are you going? All right. Okay. You tell him. Thank you. Little <laughs> 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 
Yeah! This is really cool. Thank you guys. Like, honestly, this is amazing. You can give it a little bit more because we're just driving in a straight line. Oh, okay. Man, you're good at this. So if you'd like to help us raise money for this All Abilities Park, there's still time. We've got two more weeks. You can go to mattsoffroadrecovery.com. You can buy a patch or you can just donate. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>